Hey everybody, I'm Josh, and this is the weekly update for Redeeming Grace Church. It is Tuesday, September 28th of 2021, and I had the distinct privilege of preaching a message this past Sunday at South Canyon Baptist Church, our mother church. I preached a message called The Gospel Worthy Church, and we just looked at from the scriptures how God builds a gospel church that really is a rescue, a haven, a refuge for those who want to flee the wrath that is coming, the destruction of the world, the bad ideas out there. Um, how does God construct a church that um, can be a refuge, that can be a sign, that can be a witness in the world? And so it's a real privilege to preach to them, to encourage them, and to, uh, to be just part of their fellowship on Sunday. Also, Justin preached an excellent message at Redeeming Grace Church. He took you through the uh, rest of chapter 12 of Genesis on into 14, had a big chunk and did such a masterful job. I was able to watch the recording later and really appreciated that. So thank you, Justin, for handling the word so well and for feeding the flock well. And thank you, church, for allowing me to go and help our mother church while they're without a pastor, just to, to serve them well and to, uh, to encourage and challenge them uh, to be a church that is built around the gospel, a gospel-worthy church. Um, so what a privilege that is. And I am excited for where we're going in the Genesis series. Make sure you're there. The recordings and the live streams are helpful, but there's just nothing like being in the room and feeling the impact of the sermon and the prayers and the singing and the fellowship in person, live together. And so prioritize that. And I'm excited about as we walk with the patriarchs, walk with Abram and and um, and just get kind of a, a side a, a side seat view of, of his walk with God and what we can learn from that is going to be really helpful to our church and to our, our ministry. So make it a, a real priority to be there. Um, you know, there's a number of things going on that I talk about every week. There's the home groups, there's the prayer meeting, there's the men's group, there's, there's women's Bible studies, there's uh, 915 classes on Sunday. And one thing that I'm going to be kicking off at 915 this coming Sunday is our Discover RGC seminar. Um, I was going to kick it off this last Sunday, but then some people couldn't be there, so we moved it back. We're going to start it this Sunday, October 2nd at 9.15. Just show up at the journey, and I'll gather us up, and then I just walk through how our church works. Uh, the first session is on the gospel. The second ser um, session is uh, walking through our statement of faith, what we believe and why we believe it. Uh, the third session is our covenant and, and why we make such a strong commitment to each other why that matters and why that distinguishes us in many ways from typical American church that isn't very effective <laughs> um, a lot of the time is that our commitment to each other and understanding our shared understanding of what it means to be disciples together from the Bible and being committed like in a formal way to that is so critical. Um, and so we walk through that missions and how we handle money and how we connect with each other and what does why do we do worship the way we do it just really give you a behind the scenes look at all that we do as a church and then it comes with an invitation to join it. Like the, it is open to all to come join this, that if you have trusted in Christ and are walking with him and obeying him and willing to sign on to what we understand the Bible teaches about church and discipleship, we would love to have you join the team. Uh, the metaphor that I've used is that God has made us fishers of men. And so Redeeming Grace is this boat. And this boat has been filled with members who are casting the net over, side, over the side of the boat and pulling the net in. And we need all hands on deck. We need more hands to help grab the net. And so some um, are in our net and we're trying to pull them into the boat, help them to become Christians. And then there's some that are in the boat that we really would love to, not just that they're saved and in the boat, but now they're also helping with the net, pulling people in. That's really what membership is, is that you've come to faith in Christ, you're in the boat, you've, you're saved, you're, you're out of the water, you're in the boat, but you're not yet grabbing a part of the net and helping fish. Uh, that's really what membership is, is a commitment to go, you can count on me to be on this part of the net and, uh, and we'll, we'll do this together. And membership helps train us and open uh, the opportunities up to us so that we can know who is doing what and we can cooperate together to be the most effective church that we can be and be fishers of men to see more people brought into salvation and then put to work within the kingdom. So uh, we walk through a lot of that at the Discover RGC class, 915 Sundays. Just show up and uh, um, we'll sit down and we'll have a great conversation about what that looks like at our church and invite you to be a part of it. We want you to be a part of it. So consider that this Sunday. Um, one last thing is that another thing that I'm involved in is, uh, is um, our denominational work. So uh, we're part of the Southern Baptist Convention or actually the term I like better, the Great Commission Baptist Convention. 
uh, which is 47,000 churches across the U.S., plus thousands of missionaries around the world, the largest Protestant uh, evangelical denomination in the world by far, largest mission-sending organization, five mega seminaries. Um, just a, It's a massive engine of kingdom work. It's messy, and you hear stuff in the news that sometimes isn't true, sometimes is true. Um, but within that big 47,000 47, churches is smaller associations, conventions is what we call them, one is the Dakota Baptist Convention, and I'm getting more and more involved there, which is just the churches within North and South Dakota, like 92, I think, churches that cooperate resources together, look out for each other, try to encourage each other. And then within that, even smaller, because the Dakotas, that's a big area. It's hard for us to know everybody. Within that is an association called the Black Hills Area Baptist Association. It's a real clever name, I know. Uh, I've been asked to take charge of that and have agreed to do that. So I spend a little bit of time trying to find ways for these 22, 23 churches that are in the Black Hills area to cooperate well together. Um, there are several of those churches that don't have pastors, and so how do we make sure that those churches are shepherded and taught well? And I try to help with that. Um, what are some new areas where new churches could be started? What are some churches that are struggling? Uh, we have a budget that we oversee to try to bless churches, help them do mission trips, help them fix up their facility, help them with a family emergency, a benevolence issue. And, uh, and so that's one of the extensions of the Ministry of Redeeming Grace Church is my investment in helping other churches that we're associated with be healthy, be strong, be encouraged. And so um, I, I really want to be a church that isn't just about our kingdom, that, uh, that we are happy if God sends revival and it comes in the other guy's church. We're just not that interested in it being all about us. We would love for God to flourish our church but not at the expense of another church. And so since God has blessed us and we have the ability to do this, uh, I, am, I am investing time in that. So that's one way that you are at work um, in encouraging other work within the Black Hills is by uh, my investment in those. And if you have a desire to sort of know what the needs of other churches are locally and how you could help, let me know because that's part of my job is to help find solutions um, and help not just our church flourish, but other churches as well. One way that I'm going to do that is every first Sunday of the month, I'm going to host here at the ministry center a luncheon for pastors just to get together, no cost to them, um, to just come and enjoy some lunch and, and just fellowship with some other pastors who are also dealing with some of the same issues that they are. Just a place to unburden, to pray, to confess sin, to ask for help. Uh, so many of our pastors here within the association are there's some that are down on the reservation doing really challenging work. Some are very isolated, clear, a long ways away from anybody. It reaches all the way from down in Edgemont and Pine Ridge up to Belfouche and Newell. Um, and so, uh, and everywhere in between, these churches are spread out. Pastors need encouragement. Churches need partnership and help. And, um, and I'm just um, going to try to give a little bit of my time to try to make that happen so that Christianity flourishes in our area and not just in our little church. So if you want to be a part of that, you want to give to that, you want to support that, you want to help some of these other churches, let me know, because that's um, that's something that I have a passion for, and I'm excited that uh, that our ministry doesn't just benefit us and the people we're trying to reach, but is also a blessing to other churches, and churches without pastors, churches with financial difficulty, and churches with struggling with struggles and difficulties, and um, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of that. So. Just wanted to let you know that that's a thing that's happening. That's a thing that's going on that maybe you don't know about uh, and, and, and a kind of side um, extension of our ministry that um, that I'm a part of. And I uh, just want you to know that, be encouraged by it, and be praying for it. Next Monday will be the first of these pastor luncheon gatherings. Just pray that there would be some guys that would come and would really be encouraged and not give up. They would be encouraged, we'd be strengthened. They'd be better pastors to their flocks because of our time spent together. So... Love you. Find some way to get involved, some way to get engaged, some event to sign up for. So many things going on, so many awesome opportunities to connect with each other. And uh, would hope that you would jump in on those. And uh, I'll catch you next time.